this is Channel 37 at Bafaco Modular Day in beautiful Barcelona. I'm here with Andre from Feedback Modular. Uh, Hi. Hello. I'm Andre. And um, we got to see a really beautiful demo last night of his new mixer. And I want to hear a bit more about this project. But first, I'd like to start with your origin into music and into specifically electronic music and how you, it came to be for you. Difficult question from the start. <laughs> it's, um, I'm uh, original from Bucharest, Romania, mm -hmm. where I was born, which uh, was, uh, you know, everybody knows, a socialist country to um, 89. And when I was young, uh, uh, you couldn't find so many instruments. So everything uh, was just uh, things you saw in movies, mm -hmm. pictures, uh, mag magazines. And um, I uh, tried to build some guitar pedals for myself. And... Uh, uh, because I didn't had internet then, mm -hmm. I found some designs, uh, some schematics at uh, don't know, libraries. And uh, the first 100 circuits I made didn't work. And after 10 years of frustration, they actually started to come together and come together in my mind. So, uh, First, it was passion for music, and that transformed into a passion for uh, instruments, for electronic instruments, from guitar to synthesizers. And I think the story from now on is similar to a lot of other designers or sellers or users. In what way? You start to have the passion for this and to build is like... Uh, you build more and more, you learn more and more, you play more and more with them. So, what was the first thing, actually, like the initial um, exposure to like electronic music that made you go to the library and find the schematic? Uh, my parents were really influenced by the rock period, being uh, because of, uh, of course, a lot of uh, vinyl-centered uh, cross the borders, and everyone had access to certain music but they were listening i don't know beatles if you want to game names and uh, so on acdc and uh, but uh, and uh, this uh, influenced all of us uh, in a certain way because when uh, they could reach uh, any type of music and any type of message after the 90s um, uh, they were uh, like um, they were the guys bringing music to the young person to adolescents mm. then the millennials then okay. and uh, I couldn't choose from a lot of things N not because you couldn't find them it's because uh, you you had the options to buy only the options that the old guys gave to you mm. that were selling uh, recordings under the table so practically you'll find things like electronica music like tangerine dream like Rafferk, like uh, uh, a lot of crowd rock music which was good for me mm. but uh, i don't know 15 years ago i started to find uh, uh, a lot of synth pop, new wave, alternative, uh, a lot of uh, uh, the beginnings of techno. Uh, I started to see countries. I start and see, oh my God, so so many bands and so interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, where are you? Where was all this music yeah. until now? So practically. I started to learn and my passion for uh, electronic stuff grew. I'm a punk person. Punk is really uh, close uh, to electronic music because it's the same, uh, uh, it's the same manifestation but without uh, you change the guitar with electronic sound. So you can find them in many electronic recordings, the spirit of uh, 
and no free anarchism and so on. So yeah. how does this uh, broad interest translate into actually making the modules themselves and becoming a maker of these instruments? I started as a builder, of course, and I built a lot of kits from other uh, suppliers mm -hmm. and from other uh, companies. And uh, again, they didn't work. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, um, uh, I had a big modular system uh, probably, probably, probably working 25%. Uh, And uh, I have, of course, to mention my colleague, Christy Sugar, who is not here. And mm. uh, uh, he, he is from Romania, like this, uh, you know, in every country there is a guru who knows <laughs> a lot of uh, things about uh, electronics. He's a super engineer, he did uh, medical instruments. Mm. And... Um, Somebody was telling about me, ah, is this uh, guy who is uh, building a lot of stuff, it's super crazy and uh, listening to a lot of music, maybe you should uh, uh, meet each other. And uh, I was not, uh, I didn't have the company yet, but I wanted to play, like, I wanted to have bands, like, to play with them. And uh, I... Um, Uh, I called him, he said, oh, I heard about you, interesting that I didn't heard about anyone here in this city, in Bucharest. Maybe if they are, they are not uh, on the surface, maybe they are mm -hmm. not telling, hey, yeah. we are here. So, um, and I said, let's meet. And I went to his house, but uh, I didn't tell him that I took like five, six modules and three or four synthesizer. I packed them in uh, uh, t-shirts and panties because <laughs> that's what I had. I didn't have the uh, rub bubbles. Mm -hmm. I packed them. I took a big uh, uh, backpack for mountains, filled it, went to his home and uh, I went to his room. It's a room full of Oberheims and synthesizer. I said, okay, you have, uh, you have a room full of knobs, not a room uh, full of uh, uh, normal walls or uh, yeah. <laughs> like cement. You're mm -hmm. living uh, with cables. And uh, he said, okay, let's see the module you want to troubleshoot. It's this backpack. He said, oh my God, you, didn't, you don't even know me and you brought all this stuff. How in the world when we will have time to... And I said, I, I have no one to ask how to test these modules. And, um, okay, bring the first one. He looked at it and said, this is the worst thing I saw in my life. Not even when I was eight years old, And now I'm 50, I'm soldering better than you. So if you don't improve your skills, nothing will work. And, oh my uh, goodness. How do you recover from that? Uh, actually, next day I went to the therapist, to my therapist. Like, uh, uh, I am like this uh, Woody Allen style, like to mm -hmm. complain about the world and myself and say I'm... Uh, I made these mistakes and mistakes I should and I said I went to this guy yesterday and he said to me everything I do is like uh, I'm not uh, raising his eight years uh, old uh, skills <laughs> so, oh my but he had me and in one week uh, we were super friends because uh, he understood my passion for music and All these things are interwined, and uh, uh, I, I don't know, it was a, a nice um, partnership. And uh, after that, because he doesn't have time to uh, build stuff, he just uh, give me ideas, we troubleshoot them. He's really my partner, but uh, he's more on the technical side after we finish uh, the design and everything and uh, find all the bugs he says now it's your 
time to sell them, to do business stuff, to build them and everything. So, mm -hmm. so it's, uh, yeah, we share. Well, that's a very uh, interesting collaboration story. So um, I've noticed in the module that you shared the other day, the mixer, there's similarities to those uh, created in the 80s. Is that the case? And can you tell me a little bit more about um, the module? Mm -hmm. uh, it was like by chance because I'm not a programmer. I, I didn't met a programmer uh, in Romania. So, uh, and also because when uh, I was little, uh, the analog synthesizer were, uh, I don't know, uh, the fashion. Okay. And the digital ones, they, they were not modules like now. They were super big and usually the people who were buying synthesizer and the digital ones were very big. And uh, I... It's not like I was in love with style. It's just that uh, I grew with... You have to have an LFO, a VCO, an ADSR, a modulator, a delay, a reverb and so on so practically i all the that you make a sound uh, scheme or setup by uh, old school like you put the vco in the vca the vca the, or in vcf the vcf in the vca you put it in the mixer you control it all you, you control everything with envelopes and triggers and uh, uh, old sequencer and uh, and I'm not against I have a lot of digital modules mm -hmm. but uh, as I said from first I'm not a programmer so I uh, together with Christy we choose uh, the classic designs which are the best we did modifications we did uh, style modifications to have a certain uh, Workflow. Mm -hmm. uh, we adapted to some voltages to have uh, to be compatible fully with the modular, and we came after that with our designs. Like, and we will make more uh, modules, maybe who are not based of certain things, and usually it's a style that probably many builders adopt it's not it's not like uh, you can come with something really really new in software yes because as a programmer you can be really original mm -hmm. and uh, you can change the workflow many times mm -hmm. but here there are some just some certain types of uh, designs for everything that if you're not uh, an engineer in sound, you can come so easily mm -hmm. with something unheard before. So what is special about the mixer that you were showing last night? I started at first with um, three preamps, uh, which uh, I had this mixer. They were used uh, in the past for um, bands like uh, Pink Floyd, Tangerine Dream, I don't know, Klaus Schultz and stuff. and. Uh, uh, it uh, had uh, super electronic sounds, uh, sound like uh, they they were not. Uh, it was used just as a mixer. You know, yeah. we have to sum this certain sound to mix them. Okay, but uh, they discovered uh, I don't know in the 90s, 2000. This mixer had a great sound. It's small. Mm -hmm. We have this uh, because now the mixers are. Uh, these uh, super uh, uh, mixers with uh, super little noise floor, you know, mm. digital uh, chips, digital VCAs, which are uh, uh, which are super high-end uh, processor in a chip. So, and a lot of people from not from modular scene. I think before modular scene, they started to use them as a summer for their recordings in the studio for their stage and said oh my god we had this in the 80s we didn't 
give a shit about this mixer and now the sound is so cool. Yeah. Uh, the BX mixer was uh, used BX, BX, BX was used in the 80s uh, in early uh, uh, house recordings. I don't okay. know, Africa Bambata or uh, other person. They use the new TR-808 now, the Japanese uh, drum machine. And uh, because they, they use the cheapest mixer, they put it there and when they raise the gain, oh, this kick is so cool, it's distorted. Yeah and uh, it's the house kick from the 80s in the 90s the cr mixer the, uh, uh, before vrz of course i'm not giving names because yeah yeah, yeah. You no know, you can't but uh, uh, they said uh, uh, they put the uh, 303 the tr uh, not the, the tr the tb303 the bass line they put on it and uh, started to go acid. Mm -hmm. But before, after acid, when they raised the gain, it was distorted acid. And okay. all, all the uh, techno acid uh, sound, like, uh, they uh, started to sound like this. So, okay. when I built it my modular I said why I want this sound why I don't want these big bricks that I have with glitchy pots always I had to clean something mm -hmm. so I met the preamps Christy said to me uh, you should do this mm -hmm. he helped me and it was a hit like I sold a lot and I said now, now it's the time to build the mixer because I knew this will uh, ask for a lot of resources. Mm. And he gave uh, a lot of help here because here where his knowledge was like had a big impact. He designed all the ground circuitry and everything. Uh, it's not so simple because you'll have a lot of uh, so noise from power when you put six channels you will send uh, uh, with um, uh, auxiliaries uh, sound to different uh, delays and reverbs they will create ground loops and in modular everyone know that, that the modular is a big ground loop hole yeah exactly so uh, the mixer uh, has to be very well designed and I couldn't without him so I understood why you need to be a team yeah. because uh, every line there uh, we took like uh, a month to just to see how the how, how the uh, PCB lines were uh, will pass uh, one up on each other or, or s aside each other and so on. Sounds like a huge project. So you're familiar with the cats and synthesizers? Have your cats ever interacted with the synthesizers in an interesting way, created something freaky? I have uh, six cat builders. <laughs> it's like uh, <laughs> my girlfriend came with five cats. She's a cat sitter. And uh, it's like I had just one cat. and. Uh, Mm. Of course, cats are everywhere. Yeah. On uh, uh, um, uh, buyer said uh, uh, we have a, a cat hair uh, who exists in everything we do, <laughs> in the I don't know in the fridge, <laughs> in the food, in and well, I, I agree weaved into you. the PCB even. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm asking if actually this. Uh, 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 if this super big factory is, you know, a fun factory where there are only two, 200, 2,000 particles per uh, uh, square meter of air, if they are not taking their suits, their, their hazmat suits, their masks, and then everything, they have air flows to blow everything, and after they enter the factory, they rub a cat, and all the, every processor have a cat uh, hair inside. 
Okay, that's Maybe. that is funny to imagine. Well, thank you so much for this conversation and sharing a bit of your story. We cool. really appreciate nice. it.